That topic, we're going to move on to... Oh, yeah, well, I was going to talk about more a little bit more of Sonic Brano. So yeah, Brano. With that, with that said, and we got a little sidetracked with the whole Airy Mini thing, yeah. but, but the <laughs> point is, essentially, the Sony Brano is a souped-up FX6. So from a quality standpoint, it does fit right in between the, uh, the Sony Venice uh, uh, 1 or 2, you know, pick your pick, mm-hmm. um, and the Sony FX9. It's like right in the middle there. Um, it's essentially like a, uh, I would actually, you know what, I'm going to correct that. I'm going to say it's like a souped up FX9, um, because it's essentially got very similar functionality, uh, to the FX9, but it has everything that FX9 owners wanted, which was a proper battery mount. Uh, of course they chose V mount because it's Sony and that's their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, obviously you and I would prefer gold mount. I'm sure somebody yeah. would make a uh, way to, to change that. I, I know Bebop on my Venice, I, uh, I did a Bebop swap to change it from uh, uh, the built-in V-mount to a built-in gold mount. Um, <clears throat> but um, it has the ability to record in the lowest, or I would actually just say highest compression uh, raw, which is huge. And most of the time, my experience with raw has always been that uh, the compression codecs have gotten so good that even at the highest compression, it's really good. So the fact that you're able to do that and you got this really good sensor where you can shoot Super 35, which again is another, um, another thing we'll, which we'll talk about a little bit. That, that's the sensor size, right? Is it Super 35? Right. Um, okay. You can't shoot full frame which is fine um because you know you heard my rant earlier about full frame mm-hmm. we, we don't really need that um i think it shoots um maximum height of 16 by 9 and dci at 17 by 9 so it does not shoot 3.2 which is totally fine i am uh, not sad about losing that uh, i kind of wish they would just make the sensor 17 by 9 or a vista vision sensor the way red does mm-hmm. um but um Again, we don't need that format. Uh, if you really need to shoot that, of course, you got the Venice and the Venice 2. But um, it's got all the buttons and stuff on the operator side. So it is very much going to be a documentary uh, ENG kind of professional camera. Mm-hmm. Running gun. Right. So my experience with RAW has always been that most of the time you don't need it. Uh, I would almost say up to maybe between 85 and 90% of the time you don't need it. There are certain situations where let's say you're shooting a sci-fi movie or a a horror film where you're going to be doing an insane amount of color grading. Then RAW becomes extremely useful because that's what RAW does. is It doesn't give you more latitude in terms of exposure, but it does give you a lot of color grading options. So if your goal is to do heavy color grading, raw is going to be important. Uh, but if it's not, and uh, um, then log is almost always fine. The only time that it may become a problem is if you didn't set your white balance correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you could... You can, um, <laughs> but that's well, probably... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, while we're on this topic, topic, I guess you can tell the people or explain to them the difference between log and raw because mm. when, once once you look at them they in the camera they both kind of look similar mm-hmm. that's right they do to, yeah. yeah so in terms of just what each is would you um so raw essentially what it's supposed to be and it does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer but what it's supposed to be in its most basic form is that it takes the black and white data that comes out of the sensor uh and allows you to adjust how it produces color when it's in whatever program you're going to be using. Um, There's no color information added within the camera. Um, I mean, technically there kind of is because of the way the Bayer mask works, but um, technically all the color processing for the final color image is done in the computer, not in the camera. This is not true with all cameras. Blackmagic, for example, um, uh, does process their their raw file so blackmagic raw actually is a process file and the reason they did that actually wasn't because um uh you know they couldn't do a true raw file well 
The reason they couldn't do a true raw file was because <laughs> of Red, which uh, that's a whole different topic, but essentially Red had the patent on internal raw recording mm -hmm. up until recently where Nikon challenged it. Um, but uh, uh, different manufacturers went about it differently. Airy, for example, I think was trying to do uh, one frame at a time. So that way it technically wouldn't be internal raw. The Sony Venice, of course, added the back. And the reason that the FX6, FX3, and FX9 all had to have external recorders to use raw was because of red. Red. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. So, so they, they basically had the, the chokehold on They had the chokehold on it. And Nikon challenged it, and now it's opened the doors up to uh, okay. yeah, manufacturers finally doing internal raw. Okay. And this is why I hate autofocus because once again, <laughs> focus oh, yeah. on us. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh yes. Um, um. All right. So the Sony Barano, I think it's going to be a fantastic camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's lightweight. It's going to be great for a lot of different applications, and it'll merge well with the uh, 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 Sony Venice lineup. Um, it also has a built-in PL mount, which is fantastic. Nice. No more uh, third-party. No, yeah, no more, exactly, yeah, exactly. No more so. E to PL. It's just yeah, PL. exactly. And the nice thing about that PL mount, like the Venice, it also has captive screws when you want to take it off and use the E mount. Oh, yeah. But it has everything in filmmaking should have captive screws. <laughs> but as much as we take stuff apart and put it back oh, together, oh my gosh, the everything should yes. have captive screws. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it, it has, uh, uh, what is it? Um, I'm trying to, what's the name of Cook's uh, uh, lens data? Oh, LDS, yeah. lens data system. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or or iData or whatever they call it. Um, yeah, I think it's iData. Or it, it may have changed, but I it think may it have was changed. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll let Tony look that up. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see what we got. Um, but anyway, it's great. So it, it's, it really is going to be a proper production camera that, that'll fit in a wide variety of, of production applications. So anywhere from high-end YouTubers, um, like uh, I know you're a big fan of Marquez. Um, mm. uh, so it would be great for like stuff he does. Um, mm. And it would be great for uh, um, documentary filmmakers that want that flexibility to be able to shoot raw when they feel it's appropriate and, and just have a, a fully functional camera with bigger batteries. Um, the and, name is the... Eye lens display system oh, for the okay. cook. Yeah, so I was a little off. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I know. It was I something? Yeah, it's like I remember the, the, the saying S, that in the, the menu, S4 so. eyes and S5. Right, eyes exactly. And all that. It's like there's yeah, an the, eye the in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, all right. Um, next thing we want to talk about actually are these things in front of us. So these are the uh, Rode microphones. Um, oh yeah. So I have, Tony's got the, uh, yeah, the, the wireless, the wireless me. me, and I have the very popular uh, uh, Rode Wireless 2, uh, which have just been a huge uh, runaway hit for Rode. Yeah. Um, now, there's been a lot of talk online about, uh, you know, who these mics are for, mm -hmm. and I can tell you right now in one word. It's for us. <laughs> you see, neither neither Anthony or myself are sound people. Yeah, exactly. We are not sound people. We're not sound people. Any, any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. So it is good to have a, a system that is pretty much plug and play. Mm -hmm. And I know that us being on the camera side, we're talking about all these auto features that were like, mm -hmm. oh no, we don't like it, we don't like it, we take them off and do manual. <laughs> but then we switch over to audio, which mm -hmm. we don't know anything about. We're mm -hmm. like, oh my God, we love all these auto features. <laughs> <laughs> and some people be like, no, no, take them off, take them off. <laughs> but it, it, it is really um, to each his own and it's different use case scenarios for different things. Mm -hmm. we, well, we want good quality, Mm -hmm. But don't necessarily have the, I won't say the time, but have like the knowledge or the know-how to, to pull that high quality out of an audio system. Rode definitely helps us out with having things like the auto gain so you don't blow out if you got two people talking and one mm -hmm. is super mm -hmm. high or super lower and all that stuff. And yeah, so it's, it's good to have some auto systems, I guess, for 
video answer. Yeah, again, I guess. like for, yeah. for people like yeah. us that are that don't yeah. make a living out of doing exactly. this, uh, yeah. it is perfect for us. And even the new Wireless Pro um, is also perfect for uh, um, uh, indie filmmakers, uh, but in particular the ones that like doing um, short films. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it is. The inclusion of time code is amazing. So now you can. Oh yeah, with the Wireless Pro, they mm-hmm, yeah they did mm-hmm, time code mm-hmm. in it. And that also um, just reminds me. I think that was another new feature with the the GoPro Hero 12. Is I think it's it includes right. time code now. Includes time so code. Can, yeah, that's yeah. What I'm yeah saying, so you can so. match up. But yeah, uh, so back to the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean we're even using the road yeah. podcaster to record our stuff here because uh, you know it's got a lot of automatic features here. Mm. Uh, uh, I know you guys can't hear this at home, but Anthony's really loud. So I had no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's great for uh, for people that just don't want to mess around with it and get some good quality audio. Exactly, um, and and to to harpen back or to come full circle, mm-hmm. these are perfect when you're pairing them with what your mobile filmmaking setup that's right and that's right so they were lightweight that they just fit right onto it you can pop it on and now you've got professional video mm-hmm. and professional audio and a handheld package yeah that, and a, that, that uh, doesn't cost that much at all yeah that's right it's hard yeah. to beat the price uh mm-hmm. price to performance um and quality so you know again you know i know some uh some professionals will say well you can't change the batteries and again it's because it's not made for those types of productions. Yeah, it's not like for, an all-day thing. Yes, yeah, a, a couple right. hours here and there, you go take a mm-hmm, break, mm-hmm. come back maybe the next day or something. Yes, yeah, right, right. For 12, 13-hour days, which honestly no one should be doing. So in the film industry, I think, but that's a I, think it's, topic. I think it's great, and it's no surprise to me personally that uh, a friend of mine was looking for these uh, wireless pros, and they are sold out. Uh, mm-hmm. She even went to Australia, and I think she found one kit, uh-huh. <laughs> which is where they're based out of. Uh-huh. So yeah, they've been selling out of these things. It's a yeah. huge runaway they hit are, for them. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're pretty uh-huh. good. And quality. of course, they got a bunch of road stuff here too. Exactly. You got the, the arms, the <laughs> pod mic over there, the pod. Yep. I think <laughs> so. Marco is single-handedly keeping Road in business. <laughs> <laughs> so Road, if you want to send over. So. <laughs> I will not say no to. <laughs> we will gladly test out your newest product. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure Tony's Ooh. talking to DJI right now. <laughs> um, oh all right, let's see. Our, ne- our next thing we wanted to talk about. Um, uh, uh, oh, the the cooks for oh, yes. uh, the yeah. cooks. The uh, mm-hmm, so what mm-hmm. were they? Where are they at? Yeah, these are the new E mount uh, cook lenses. Yeah, so you tell me about them because you sent me a link and I looked at it a little bit, the SSP3s. And, and tell me what, what makes these. Oops. <laughs> what makes these uh, the I best forgot, thing? I forgot to put Cook on here. Cook. Oh. There we go. SP3 mirrorless primes. Yeah, there it is, the SP3 Cook Optics. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are the new service pack three. I mean, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a fantastic lens set from Cook. They are essentially the Pancros. Um, mm. One of my favorite lenses to shoot with. So this mm. allows you to bring the, um, uh, the quality of the bigger uh, PL mount lenses mm-hmm. onto a smaller email camera like the FX3 that we're shooting with here. Or the FX6. Or the FX6, mm-hmm. especially if you're on a drone. Oh my god, you mm-hmm. put the FX6 on a lifter and you put these on there. Oh, and the lens Ooh. flare characteristics. So you, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, that'd be nice. It is, <laughs> this is fantastic. And the price point. Yeah, the I, enti- think, I think that's what you were most excited about. It is bonkers. Yeah. $21,000, which I know sounds like a lot of money, but believe me, for for Cook Lendis, that's nothing. Yeah. yeah for, for a whole set? <laughs> for a whole set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which um, is like, what, one, two, three, five lenses? Yeah. Five lenses. A 25, a 32, a 50, a 75, and a 100. Mm-hmm. Which is a wonderful lens set. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, if you have the right uh, right type of email camera, like, uh, like an FX9 or even the upcoming Sony Murano, if you switch to Super 35, um, then you can, you know, punch in even more with that 100 mm-hmm. if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, 
I, I can't say enough good things about this. This is this is something I was really excited when I first saw this. Oh, this is interesting. I on the website and I'm mm-hmm. looking, and they actually have user changeable mounts on the back. You know, I'm not surprised about that. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it can come with an E, or you can buy L mounts, M mounts, RF mounts. Mm-hmm. So you necessarily don't have to that buy is great. a whole another lens to get to get it to fit with your camera you can actually just buy a couple different mounts if you've got a couple different camera systems and you've got one set of lenses for all your different cameras and it has a nice. dual focus scales which um uh anthony can tell you about how important that is uh, that's really for acs so you can have the operator side uh the scale and the uh Oh yeah, the two. So yes, yeah, so you can. At least keep. I think that's what it is. Cause well, I, where, I'm, you, unless where are you seeing that at? On the. Um, it's on their their website here. It's. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm on the web. I'm just trying to find. It's a scale, where. dual focus scales. So. On that the, that may actually be meters and feet. Actually, if I'm. <laughs> yeah, it's meters and feet. Okay. Were you something. on the features or the? Uh yeah, uh, uh, well if you scroll down and it says uh, uh, SP3 essentials. So it shows you the focal lengths, the format, mount, and so forth. These oh, are all okay, T2.4, gotcha. by the way, which is plenty. Um, you know, you can't get into those crazy lenses with 1.2 or 1.0 or 0.95. Um, and those are really sort of specialty situations. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally, as you know, have a problem with shooting everything ultra shallow. Yeah. Because you can't um, see anything. You can't see anything. Yeah, exactly. You're in a, you're in a world of blur, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and just one person. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no grounding to where you are. So exactly. it's like a little bit of blur. I'm good with, but uh, turning it into a soup, uh, uh, yeah, not so much. Exactly. Uh, but I know a lot of people like that, and so I'm sure with the the longer focal lenses, you'll be able to achieve that if that's what you want. <laughs> oh my god, 8K and beyond. <laughs> beyond. <laughs> The hell do we need Beyond for? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I love it how 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 they market because all this is is just marketing. If mm -hmm. if you really want to boil it down, it's all just marketing. Mm -hmm. And so how they have this, they'll have the one picture, and then they'll have just the boxes of this is what SD looks like, this is what HD looks like, this is what 6K looks like. It is just one picture where you're like you could get that whole picture in whatever format you wanted and still see all of what you're trying to see. You just got to move the camera back and forward. Like it's yeah. Me, I mean that, that scale with UHD for, I mean, I think what they're trying to display here is the amount of resolution, but even, well, yeah. even this is but a little the, but misleading. That's not resol- yeah. It's not it's resolution. Not, resolution. That's right. a frame. That's a whole different, more frame. A resolution is you see right. more detail in within the frame that within you're the in. same frame right yeah, exactly. within the same frame not you see more image <laughs> so <laughs> uh for those of you who probably just to make it simpler i think mm-hmm. take a super 35 frame and you have two cameras one shoots 4k one shoots 8k mm-hmm. they are both exactly the same field of view mm-hmm. the image is exactly the same but one of them just has more pixels so in yeah. theory the super 35 and here's where a lot of people kind of get a uh, little mistaken on that, uh, especially when I was trying to talk to somebody who was saying, you know, they wanted uh, more uh, resolution in uh, in vertical video to come from uh, 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 from shooting normal. Um, they were trying to argue that shooting with a three two sensor would give you more resolution, and the truth is that you could actually shoot with a super thirty five sensor that had an eight K sensor that would give you more resolution. Than a full frame three two six K sensor. Sounds weird, yeah. but if it's resolution <laughs> you want, then you need to up your K's, not your sensor size. Yeah, um, two very different things. Yeah, uh, I'm sure we could do a whole topic on that. But yeah, <laughs> uh, essentially what Tony's trying to describe here is that this marketing mumbo jumbo is a little silly. Yeah, it, it, it really <laughs> is. It's like if you go to AK, you can see twice the the image is like no you can't see twice the image you yeah. still look at the same image it's just a crisper version of that image mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. more of it but honestly uh the reason for the big resurgence of vintage lenses is because we don't really want to see that much uh detail oddly enough mm-hmm. uh, we've been trying to 
that's the thing. You get mm-hmm. it, you get to a point where it becomes clinical, right? Almost where mm-hmm. it's it's too you're and you're you're just not your your eye is not used to seeing. I'm not gonna say your eye is not used to seeing it because we can get used to anything after a while. It's that it's not the natural way for you to see something like as we're looking here, mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. naturally don't see things in 6k and 8k so it's gonna look weird Mm -hmm. whenever we see something like that and it's just gonna look off and the minute anything like that happens it pulls you out of the story because you gotta remember everything that we're doing all falls back into i'm telling a story Mm -hmm. how effective am i telling this story that's that's really what it comes down to because uh i um i was talking to um uh, Mandy Walker, who did um, uh, the Elvis movie, she got nominated for mm-hmm. an Academy Award for that. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about going over to Panavision and designing lenses to give you, uh, you know, particular artifacts that were uh, inherent in lenses of that era, mm-hmm. um, because that's the story she was telling. Um, so she wanted to be as authentic as possible right, exactly. for that time frame. So she wasn't trying to get the ultimate clinical, you know, super sharp look mm-hmm. or anything. She was thinking about the story Mm -hmm. and that's ultimately what's important and exactly cook actually has um the reason i personally like cook lenses uh you know my top three favorite lenses are going to be um ingenue uh cook and uh um uh, believe it or not Uh, Hmm. we'll talk about that more some other time but Mm -hmm. uh um cook in particular has a coating on there that is very clever uh, I won't get into it here, but essentially it makes skin tone soft. So the image looks super sharp mm. without over sharpening skin tones. Mm. And how they do it is super clever. Um, but uh, anyway, bringing that, uh, uh, you know, image to these smaller format cameras, I think it's fantastic, especially, yeah. especially for that price point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely because here let's just let's just do an apples to apples comparison. Mm-hmm. Let's bring up uh, a, just a normal set of Cook lenses and see oh, how, you're how, how at much. The price. Yeah. yeah, and just look at, at a, a price of a normal set of Cook lenses. Uh, let's uh, see. Actually, uh, we, can B, we can find some on B. We can find some on BH, right? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Uh, I'm pulling up the full frame Pancro. So one lens. Uh, I'm looking at the 50 millimeter here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pancro Classic PL mount lens, fourteen thousand dollars. Fourteen thousand for one for, lens, for one just lens. one lens. And you can get a set of five SP3s mm-hmm. for what is that? That's, that's, that's less than than half. Well, because fourteen, it would be yeah. So mm-hmm. it, it would be about. It'd thirty be t- grand. It'd be thirty. Two lenses, grand. you're already yeah. at twenty eight thousand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so two lenses at twenty eight, or five lenses at twenty one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah almost so, a no brainer. So really. Yeah, just to, to put it in scale for people that aren't in the film industry and don't understand, <laughs> while we're saying twenty one thousand is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, speaking of cheap, uh, yeah. well not cheap, but right. like very inexpensive. <laughs> <laughs> 